and everybody said, yeah. I welcome everyone to our Tuesday Leaders Development tonight in Jesus' name. And I pray the word will be relevant to every life, every minister, every brother, every sister in Jesus' name. And for those ministers who are joining us since our last crusade, we welcome you too and we pray that the word of God will benefit you as it benefits all of us together in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you for this time. Thank you for your word, ever new, ever fresh. Thank you, Lord, because you are the God who remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. And as you spoke to men in days gone by, you're still speaking to every one of your children, of your ministers, of your servants today. And as they obey you, I pray that the strength and the grace and the vision and the passion to be obedient unto you, grant to us in Jesus' name. We pray will not sift your word. Will not say I accept this, I don't accept that. But the totality of your word we accept in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, God bless you, you can sit down. Already you know we are studying from Genesis chapter 24 And we have read already quite a number of verses from Genesis 24 verse 1 to verse 67 Now we are going to select some verses tonight We are talking on the marriage and the family of heavenward believers The marriage and the family of heavenward believers in Genesis chapter 24 verse 1 it says and Abraham was old and well stricken in age and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things think about that the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things and yet he will not forsake God Bless Abraham in all things and yes, he will not live a life that is all self-centered. He is still dependent on God in everything. We look at verse 2. It says in verse 2, And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house, that ruled over all that he had, Put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh. And then it says in verse 3, it says, And I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven. By the Lord, the God of heaven. Abraham taught all the people in his household the way of God. And he made them to honor God, to love God, to fear God, and to be obedient to God. So he could say to this uh, eldest uh, of the servants that he will make him swear by the God of heaven and the God of the earth that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell. Look at verse 4. In verse 4 it says, But thou shalt go unto my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son Isaac. Then verse 5 tells us, It says, And the servant said unto him, Peradventure, the woman will not be willing to follow me unto this land. Must I needs bring thy son again unto the land from whence thou camest? Then in verse 6, it tells us that Abraham said unto him, Beware that thou bring not my son thither again. Look at verse 7. It says in verse 7, The Lord God of heaven. Abraham at his old age still believed in the Lord God of heaven. If there's anything we should learn is that as we grow older and older, our faith 
our faithfulness our dependence our trust on the god of heaven should be increasing until it comes to the climax after all when we're old and aged and we're near the grave we know that we're going to the god of heaven and if there is any time to believe in god and to trust in god and to depend on him totally and fully completely that is the time the lord god of heaven which took me from my father's house and from the land of my kindred and which spake unto me and that swear unto me saying unto thy seed will I give this land he shall send his angels before thee he the God of heaven shall send his angels before thee and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from this. As we look at uh, this uh, chapter 24, there are things, principles that we are going to learn from. Practices are different from principles. Practices are things that people did or people do today. But what we're learning is not the practice. It's not, you know, he did it this way. For example, we cannot say we're going to marry from our tribe. Go to my land and find a wife for me there. Why? Because in the time of Abraham, uh, all the people around him were idolatrous and the people at home were the only people that believed in the God of heaven that's why he did that today we cannot say that a servant of our house will go and pray and our son Isaac will not pray at all he will just be meditating and waiting for the person to come today everyone because that Isaac now is a believer he has the Bible he hears the Word of God so he cannot send Elisa or anybody else to go and look for a wife for him now Today, we cannot just stay at a place and pray and say, Lord, send the person now. And then, as he sends the person, immediately we give her the precious things and all that. Uh -uh. Well, at least wait for some time and see how compatible we are. And then when we get to the parents today, we cannot say, eh, now she must go with me now. Let her spend 10 days with us that at least we'll be able to interact to that no 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 the lord has prospered my way and you have told me you cannot say bad or good so let her come and then they say rebecca will you go with the man yes i will go now rebecca cannot say that today immediately you have not even seen this isaac and you have you don't even have any conviction what does he look like you see those are practices we cannot copy but what we want to dwell upon is the principle we see that is attested to and acceptable in the new testament now we have the whole bible abraham isaac Eliezer, Rebecca did not have any line, any sentence of the whole Bible. And so we excuse them, they went that, and it was good for them because at their own time they manifested faith and faith is the key and anyone that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him and also we cannot deal with jewelry now earrings and no string because at that time there was no commandment of first Timothy chapter 2 verse 9 now there is a commandment in first Timothy chapter 2 verse 9 and the children of God will go through the word of God and he cannot say because Abraham Savage gave this unto Laban and unto all those people then this is what we will do now we're going to divide the message tonight to three parts number one faith foundation for a favored family faith foundation for a favored family number two fruitful fellowship in a faithful family and number three forever freshness in the father's family let's come to number one number one is faith foundation for a favored family 
Abraham had been favored by God. Isaac also was favored by God. And Rebecca also came into that favor. We want to see the foundation of faith. Faith foundation for a favored family. In Genesis chapter 24 verse 7. And the, the Lord God of heaven which took me from my father's house and from uh, the land of my kindred and which spake unto me and that swear unto me saying unto thy seed will I give this land. He that God of heaven he, that one who brought me out, he, that one who counted my faith, my obedience as righteousness, he, the one that saved me and brought me to a good relationship with him, he shall send his angel before thee, and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from this. There are four things there. Number one, Abraham's faith for Isaac's bride. You remember? Abraham had to have faith for Isaac's birth. Now, he has to have faith for Isaac's bride. Number two, the servant's faith for intercessory with intercessory breakthrough. He prayed, he made intercession, and through faith, he had a breakthrough. Number three, Rebecca's faith for inherited benefit. Look at the young lady and there was inheritance that is going to be on Isaac and now that inheritance, Rebecca is going to come uh, to that by faith. Rebecca's faith for inherited benefit. Number three, Isaac's faith for an immediate betrothal. Isaac's faith, he was waiting, he was meditating. He had, he had total faith in the Lord that this errand of Eliezer will succeed and so he was in the right place and then as he was walking and they were coming God walking on both sides of the line on the side of I see God walking on the side of Eliezer and Rebecca God walking and they met because of faith is the foundation of faith for a favored family. Let's look at Abraham's faith. We're looking at number one, Abraham's faith for Isaac's bride. We're looking at Genesis chapter 24 verse 40. In Genesis chapter 24 verse 40, and he said unto me, the Lord before whom I walk, here is a servant now, um, you know, retelling the story. He said unto me, the Lord before whom I walk will send his angel with thee and prosper thy way and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from of my kindred and of my father's house the same faith he had for the birth of isaac he had for the bride of isaac look at romans chapter 4 reading from verse 20 it says he staggered not at the promise of god through unbelief but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God, verse 21, and being fully persuaded that before his birth, Isaac's birth, he had that faith. And now Isaac is born, and Isaac had grown, he's about 40 years of age now, and Abraham still had that same kind of faith that what he had promised, he was able to perform. As you believe in your life, for yourself, for your wife, for your husband, for your children, the Lord will fulfill it in Jesus' name. Number two, let's look at the servant's faith with intercessory breakthrough. Nobody had had any breakthrough by intercession, by prayer before this man. He just stood there and this is an errand he had never run. This is a work he had never done. And this is a project he never took up. Here was the first time to do something like this and it was a very delicate assignment that if he chose the wrong person the covenant of God with Abraham will be affected because he said through thee and through thy seed all 
all the families of the earth will be blessed therefore now look at verse 24 verse 12 of genesis 24 and he said O lord god of my master abraham i pray thee send me good speed this day and show kindness unto my master Abraham he was praying he said Lord don't let me be a stumbling block in this don't let me stand between you and Abraham don't let me block the view between you and Abraham give me good speed this day show kindness unto my master Abraham look at verse 27 in verse 27 he tells us and he said blessed be the lord god of my master abraham who has not led destitute my master of his mercy and of his truth and i been in the way the lord led me to the house of my master's brethren i been in the way in the right way in the good way in the righteous way in the way of the lord i didn't give it here or give it there if our prayers are going to be answered we must remain in the way i been in the way the lord led me to the right place to the right spot and to the right choice and he said he led me to my master's brethren and let's look at verse 48 in verse 48 it says and i bowed down my head and worshiped the lord this is not a second hand a kind of a religion for the man he had been in the, with abraham he had seen abraham worshiping the lord and he too he came to worship the lord in spirit and in truth and he said i bowed my head I saw the way Abraham worshipped the Lord and me too, I follow. You see, when we have servants with us, helpers with us, the same faith we have, the same worship we have, the same conviction we have, the same salvation we have, the same sanctification we have, and the same holiness we adore and we, we appreciate. That same salvation, that same lifestyle, that same holiness, they, we ought to bring to the people who are serving and working with us. Blessed be the lord god of my master abraham which had led me in the right way to take the my master's brother's daughter unto his son and we're told in james chapter one reading from verse five it says if any of you lack wisdom if any of you lack revelation if any of you lack assurance of the choice you are making about anything anyone if any of you lack direction as to where you ought to go and what you ought to do if any of you lack stability of your decision if any of you lack wisdom wisdom or any other thing let him ask of god that give it to all men liberally and upbraideth not and it shall be given him it shall be given you look at number three here number three here rebecca's faith for inherited benefit rebecca's faith for inherited benefit look at rebecca coming she didn't think about anything like that that morning she didn't envisage this was going to happen she was just normal not worried and not anxious about anything when we're too anxious i want to get married now i want to get married now when we're too anxious and when we're under pressure it's like we, if i don't marry this month everything will crumble and nothing will go well we will make a wrong choice we will walk in the wrong direction but there's no worry there's no anxiety and there was no depression as to others like me of my age they are getting married and then whenever we meet this one is saying this is my fiance and that one is saying this is my whatever nothing like that at all she just came and the lord was planning for her the lord will plan for your children 
and the Lord will plan for you. And then we're told in Genesis chapter 24, I'm reading from verse 23, and said, Whose daughter art thou? Tell me, I pray thee, is there room in thy father's house for us to lodge in? Now, as you look at the whole story, you see that Rebecca was well brought up. You'll see that for hospitality, she was, you know, when the servant said, eh, let me drink a water, she gave drink to him and drink to all the camels. And then when a question was asked, she answered politely and she answered with truth. And eventually when the time came and they asked, look at verse 58, in verse 58, we're asking the question now, and they called Rebecca and said unto her, wilt thou go with this man? Think about that. She had never met this man. And she had never met Abraham. She's so young. And she had never met Isaac. Going to a place she never knew. She didn't know the land. She didn't know the place. She didn't know the future. She didn't know Isaac. She didn't know Sarah. She didn't know how Sarah brought up Isaac. She didn't know how demanding Isaac will be. She didn't know how compatible Isaac will be. This is faith. It says faith that the things you have not seen, the people you had not seen, will just say yes. And she said, I will go. I will go. That is faith. The faith that takes the step when you do not know what might come in the future. Look at First Peter chapter 1. We're reading from verse 8. In First Peter chapter 1, verse 8, whom Having not seen ye love. Rebecca had not seen Isaac, and she loved him already. In whom thou now, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. She had not seen Isaac. How rich is Isaac? Even though he might be rich, how um, how generous will she will he be? Will he take care of me? Or is he like one of these men who have the money but they do not have the heart to take care of anybody? She need know that, but believe me, she rejoiced with joy, unspeakable and full of glory. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Let's look, look at number 4 here. Here is Isaac's faith for an immediate betrothal. Isaac's faith, Isaac believed that the journey of Eliezer will come out well. Isaac believed that the answer that will come will be satisfactory, will be fulfilling, will be pleasant. It will be exactly what she or he was looking for. What she, if uh, this lady comes, I don't like her height, I don't like her stature, I don't like her language, I don't like her behavior, I, and she's not like my mother because she, I see a Dodge his mother. I seek loved his mother. I seek for I seek father Abraham number one and then um, I seek a loved uh, Sarah so much and that uh, woman now the mother had died would I have a woman a wife that will take care of me like my mother took care of me I seek faith for an immediate betrothal. We're looking at uh, chapter 24 of Genesis and we're looking at verse 62. And I say, came from the way of the well, high Roy, for he dwelt, for he dwelt in the south country. And then in verse 63, it tells us, and Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the even time. There are ways of meditating. A person can meditate and say, how long is it going to take them to come? A person can meditate and say, what kind of, uh, you know, person are they bringing? A person can meditate and say, 
I believe I'm joyful. A good thing is coming my way. My life is going to turn around and the person that is coming now is going to beautify my life. And she medita he meditated in a positive way. How do you meditate? Do you meditate on your loss, on your loneliness? Do you meditate on, you know, look at me here? But he meditated on a positive side and we're told, and he lifted up his eyes and he saw and behold, all the camels were coming then in verse 64 we're told that Rebecca lifted up her eyes and when she saw Isaac she lighted off the camel and then look at verse 67 in verse 67 it says and Isaac brought her into her, into his mother's Sarah's tent no interview um, you know let me know this let me know this he already he, he believed he said this is the woman this is the bride and this one will do me good your wife will do you good amen. let me have a good amen. amen and my sisters your husbands will do you good in Jesus name and she became his wife and he loved her he loved her he didn't say i'll wait i've never met this lady and he just brought her to me now i'm not going to give too much of myself and too much of promise and too much of whatever i'm not going to tell her stories of my past i don't know what she'll turn out to be no hesitation when we have faith in god there is no hesitation there is openness and there is immediate intimacy he loved her and i seek was comforted after his mother's death i seek was comforted after um, after his mother's death he wasn't comparing everything she did ah this is different from my mother everything she said her language is different from the language of my mother and everything in the way she dressed this one is not like my mother i think i need to you know watch and see because i don't want anybody in my life that's not exactly like my mother not exactly like the picture i've always had about a suitable partner but you know i see he was comforted after his mother's death uh, let's look at Hebrews chapter Hebrews chapter 11 I'm reading from verse 8 by faith Abraham when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance he obeyed and he went out not knowing whither he went that's the faith of Abraham he went out not knowing whither he went it's like I can close my eyes and just follow the voice because it's God leading. And when God is leading, I don't know, I don't need to know the direction. God knows the direction. And then look at verse 27. In verse 27, by faith, Moses forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him. Who is invisible has seen him who is invisible that, that's why i seek also at the faith as if he saw the invisible as if he saw the invisible becoming visible and being a blessing to his life you see it's the foundation of faith faith foundation for a favored family we're coming to point number two now in point number two we are looking at fruitful fellowship in a faithful family fruitful fellowship in a faithful family now isaac the husband rebecca the wife and both had something to contribute to the marriage to the family so that there can be a fruitful family now what i've done here is to look at the life of isaac and see what he brought into the family into the union into that marriage into that family and i've looked
looked at the life of Rebecca and see what did she bring to the family. And then as we apply this to ourselves, the husband brings something to the family, the wife brings something to the family. As we do that, they will see that there's going to be a fruitful fellowship. Your fellowship in the family will be fruitful in Jesus' name. I seek, when I talk about I seek, I spell out I seek, I is for industriousness and S is for steadfastness and um, A is for attainment and the next A there is for advancing and C is for companionship. That is what he brought into the marriage and as we look at our families and we look at our marriages, what we bring I? Industriousness for an adequate provision. Industriousness for an adequate provision. Look at Genesis chapter 26 we're looking at verse 12 then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year an hundredfold and the Lord blessed him he sowed what we sow we reap if we sow nothing we reap nothing if we sow something we reap a higher harvest look at verse 12 verse 13 it says and the man works great and went forward and grew until he became very great not just because he was the son of abraham but because he was industrious he found something to do you must find something to do a work an employment or maybe a service somewhere or you're selling the market but you find something to do and you are industrious about it in fact we are told in first timothy chapter 5 verse 8 but if any provide not for his own specifically especially for those of his own house he has denied the faith he cannot say i'm walking by faith is idle I'm walking by faith, it's indolent. I'm walking by faith, it's lazy. I'm walking by faith, it depends on charity. I'm walking by faith, it's going here and there, begging and borrowing. If anyone will not be industrious to provide for his family, especially those of his own house, he has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. My brother, you will not be an infidel. Look at S there, S, steadfastness, despite adversaries, pushbacks. And you see, everything did not go easy. There are people, once they start a particular work, a particular project, a particular profession, or they lay their hands on something, and there are pushbacks. Then they go back, they say, well, I've tried my best. And the wife said, what are we going to eat? You know, uh, the world at this time, the society is at this time now, they cannot do anything, they cannot provide them. And if you want to try and do something, you have a lot of pushback. My wife, whatever you can do and bring something to the family, that will be all right. But no, look at Genesis chapter 26, and I'm reading from verse 18. It says, and I seek dig again the wells of water which they and did in the days of Abraham his father for the Philistines had stopped them they stopped those well they blocked those wells after the death of Abraham and he called their names after the names by the which his father had called them look at the next verse there it tells us in the next verse that's in verse 19 and I seek servants dig in the valley and found there a well of springing water. Verse 20 tells us, and the herdsmen of Gera did strive with Isaac's herdmen, saying, The water is ours. And he called the name of the well Essek because they strove with him. Look at verse 21. In verse 21 and he digged another well and strove for that also. And he and he called the name of his Shitna. And now in verse 22, it says, And he removed from this, that's wisdom, 
if you're trying to do a work and you're knocking your head against the wall and nothing is coming out and they're pushing you back why don't you look for a more fatal place why don't you look for a place where what you are selling will sell and the competition and the things they're doing against you will not take effect anymore and it says you remove from this and dig the northern well and for that they strove not and he called the name of each Rehoboth and he said for now the Lord has made room for us and we shall be fruitful in the land you'll be fruitful in the land but you must try and if there's any pushback, try again. Any pushback, try again. Any hindrance, try again. Don't give up and say, nothing works here. Nothing moves here. How about the other people around there who are prospering? Nobody can prosper here. Look around you. There are people that are prospering there. So don't give up. Keep on pushing. They push you back, push forward. They push you back, push forward. You will make it in Jesus' name. In First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9. First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9. For a great door and effectual is opened unto me, and there are many adversaries. But then Paul did not give up and shut his mouth and close the door and go to lie down in the room, lazy, indolent, doing nothing. He said, There's a great door and effectual opened unto me and there are many adversaries and yet you forge on you will move on in Jesus name and then A is attainment of an agreeable posture attainment of an agreeable posture look at chapter 26 and we're looking at verse 35 this Genesis which were a grief to the mind of Isaac and to Rebecca now if they don't share together if they don't talk together if there's no communication and if there is uh, no sharing they will not know that that thing is a grief of mine to me and also a grief of mine to her there was the uh, attitude of the attainment of an agreeable posture now when the wife is talking the husband must have a posture that shows he's ready to listen. And when the husband is talking, there must be an agreeable posture. Not that I don't have time. I'm tired now. We cannot talk now. Let's make it another time. Another time comes. I'm tired now. Uh, why is it you're always tired whenever I want to speak to you? Why are you always tired when we have to discuss something very important? And I see you in the church and I see you when you are counseling and you are all ears and you are at ease and you listen to all those people. Why can't you give me the same attention that you give to those other people? We must attain to an agreeable posture as we talk together the Lord help all of us in Jesus name the next A there is um, advancing towards an affirmed promise the Lord had given the promise to Abraham and the promise is now transferred unto Isaac and he must continue advancing towards the affirmed promise look at Genesis chapter 26 I'm reading from verse 2 and the Lord appeared appeared unto him and said go not down into Egypt dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of look at verse 3 in verse 3 it says sojourn in this land and I will be with thee and will bless thee for unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father he accepted that look at verse 6 in verse 6 it tells us and Isaac dwelt in Gera you see we must keep on advancing so that we can have the promise of God affirmed unto us now see his companionship with the all-time partner uh, it's uh, a companionship with the all-time partner you know you have to have the idea this is your partner and it's going to be for all time 
all time unto the end at the time of challenge all time at the time of moving on all time at the time of prosperity all time at the time of sickness all time at the time when things are booming all time you must accept that this is your all-time partner and that is what um, i seek at and he provided the companionship he didn't uh, you know draw back and you know face the wall and you know we cannot talk and all that companionship in with the all-time partner look at chapter 49 of uh, genesis and verse 31 and they buried isaac and sarah his wife and there they buried Isaac and Rebekah. Let me read that again. I missed a word. There they buried Abraham and Sarah, his wife. And there they buried Isaac and Rebekah, his wife. You know, they continued to the end. You and your wife will continue to the end. Amen. Till old age. Amen. Amen. And nothing will separate you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we've seen the part Isaac brought into the family. How about Rebecca? What did Rebecca bring into the family? We're looking at Rebecca now, and we're looking at the letters of the word of the name Rebecca are respectful without hypocrisy. Respectful without hypocrisy. The morning shows the day that she is the very first time that Rebecca would see Isaac. Look at the respect in Genesis chapter 24, verse 64. It says, Rebecca lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she lighted off the camel. She didn't just sit down there like you know some of the people of the world these days okay let me size him up let me see how he'll come through before i show my respect immediately that rebecca saw isaac she lighted off the camel and then we look at uh, the next verse there in verse 65 for she had said unto the servant what man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant had said, It is my master. Therefore she took a veil and covered herself. He is exemplary in hygiene and homemaking. Exemplary in hygiene and homemaking. You can tell when she saw the uh, servant of Abraham for the first time uh, and she wanted water. She brought her uh, the water and she had it in her, in her you know, pot, whatever. And the servant drank and then he didn't uh, take that what remained he didn't take that to the camels put that away and drew another one she was an hygienic woman and you can tell from the way she was organized when she gets when we get home she was a good homemaker now if we don't have that we need to learn that and god will help our wives in jesus name give me a good good amen, amen. Look at Proverbs chapter 20 and chapter 31. I'm reading from verse 29. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all in hygiene, in cleanliness, in keeping yourself fit and good every time. Thou excellest them all. Then in verse 30, she were told, Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that fears the Lord, she shall shall be praised verse 531 it says give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates i think the works of a rebecca praised her and spoke for her in the gate we're looking at the next letter there b is building up the home for happiness. 
after all that's what Isaac was looking for Isaac had been sorrowful and dejected since the mother died but now we have uh, this uh, you know man coming into our life and she coming into the life of, of, uh, of Isaac and we can tell from the relationship and the stories that we have read about Isaac and Rebekah that he was comforted he was happy he didn't look another direction didn't look to another place saying this one is not suitable why did the laser bring a person like this no they were compatible even though they had never met before you build the home for the happiness of everyone in the home look at proverbs chapter 14 and reading from verse 1 every wise woman builded a house every wise woman wisdom does not come from certificate wisdom from does not come the wisdom that builds the home the wisdom that builds the family it doesn't come from university it doesn't come from reading books in the library okay i'm going to go to the library i'm going to read and read it doesn't come that way it comes from the inside that you love the man you appreciate the man you respect the man and you want to contribute something positive to the man you want to lift the man up and you want him to be an achiever and you know the button to press and you know the keyhole to put the key inside that will bring happiness to the man that's a home builder you study the man not book study the man see what makes him happy what makes him tick and what makes him make progress what makes him visionary and you do that every wise woman build at her house but the foolish pluck it down with her own hands you will not destroy your family in jesus name but with your wisdom but with all the practical things you know you'll build up your family in jesus name we're talking about rebecca and the next he is exhibiting honesty and holiness exhibiting honesty when she saw isaac and he said who is that man who is that man i don't want to give respect high respect to the wrong man tell me the man tell me that man that is coming there that's your man that's my master that's the word i'm bringing you to and she said now i must demonstrate how i love this man with all honesty when you know your man when you know your husband like rebecca and you exalt him above every man on earth you exhibit honesty and holiness we're looking at philippians chapter 4 and i'm reading from verse 8 finally brethren whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are honest and whatsoever things are just and whatsoever things are pure and whatsoever things are lovely and whatsoever things of good report if there be any virtue if there be any praise think on these things think on these think on these things what we think of reflects in our tongue reflects in our language reflect reflects on our facial appearance what we're thinking of reflects on our attitude our interaction with the man we're living with if you are thinking lousy if you are thinking unkind thoughts if you are thinking look at the man and look at what he brings home and look at this and look at that that thinking you don't know even when you say good morning it will affect the the texture of that good morning but when you are thinking happy you are thinking honest and you are thinking excited and you are thinking this is the best of days for me with my man then it's going to show in everything you say i pray our thinking will improve and our interaction will improve and then we will have the right exhibition of honesty in jesus name and then the next letter there is k k 
kind, hospitable, and helpful. Already you can tell when he saw Eliza for the first time, they had never met. How she showed kindness and hospitality and also help that the man needed. When we carry that through life, you're hospitable to, or not just your husband, to everybody, the relatives of your husband. And you're hospitable to all the neighbors within and all the neighbors around. Anybody that has contact with you or contact with your husband, you are kind, you are hospitable. And then you are a person that uh, you, you're heavenly minded. You say, I'm not going to do anything that will hinder my husband from getting to heaven. Husband, I'm not going to do anything that will hinder my wife from getting to heaven. What do I gain as, you know, a wife if I make my husband angry? He's happy, he's excited, he's on top of the world, and I want to puncture his balloon so that all the air will come out. What do I gain? There Therefore, I'm going to be kind and I'm going to be hospitable and I'm going to be helpful. Look at uh, chapter 31 of Proverbs. Proverbs 31, and we're looking at verse 26. She openeth her mouth with wisdom and in her tongue was the law of kindness in her tongue the law of kindness a eh? that's the letter that follows appreciated by heaven and uh, heaven and the heavenly minded you know god was thinking about abraham he was thinking about the marriage of isaac so that they can produce a child so that god can say he's the god of abraham and a god of isaac and the god of jacob and so god was interested in that family god is interested in your family God is interested in your marriage and I pray that wife and husband as you know that you are appreciated by heaven and heaven is looking at you you produce the kind of marriage and family that you ought to have in Jesus name appreciated by heaven and the heavenly minded we're looking at Luke chapter 1 verse 28 and the angel came in unto her and said hail Mary thou art highly favored the Lord is with thee blessed art thou among women we can say that about Rebecca a person that came to marry Isaac and then we can have the God of Abraham the God of Isaac the God of Jacob blessed was that woman you could have been that woman if you were living at that time but thank God, he knew when you will be born. He knew where you will be born. He knew where your husband will be. And now if you are married, am I talking to married people here today? Married people, where are they? If you are not ashamed of being married, where are you? I pray that God will show you this, the person he had for you. And you'll make that marriage and family to be appreciated by heaven in Jesus' name. H, H means harmless, hopeful, and happy. Harmless, hopeful, and happy. Let's look at Philippians chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 15. Philippians chapter 2, reading from verse 15, that she may be blameless and harmless. That she may be blameless and harmless. You know, if you're living with somebody that you know, she will never think of anything that will hurt you, that will harm you. You totally rely on her without looking any other direction. This wife, this bride, this woman will take care of you and anything that will hurt you, even if you didn't know, she will use all her wisdom, all her strength, and all her ability, all her skill to ward that thing away from you. You will rest in that marriage. There will be rest in our marriages. That she may be blameless and harmless the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom you shine as lights in the world we're looking at Proverbs Proverbs chapter 17 we're looking at verse 22 Proverbs 17 verse 22 a merry heart doeth good like medicine any good doctor will tell you that there is the effect of the mind on the body any good doctor will tell you that whatever uh, 
pills you take if you are not happy if you are dejected if you are sorrowful if you are thinking negative you're not going to get well you know too soon and even if the if the pill they give you is going to work let me illustrate it like this let's say for example you want to take something from the ground you didn't know that the extension of the table was there and you knocked your chin on the on the on the corner there it will give you pain and then you go to the doctor and you get a pain relieving um, tablet and you swallow that even though you swallow that again that same day you're not that same chain on that corner of the table although that peel should be working but because you are knocking it and knocking it and knocking it against that table the pain will remain there you see this medicine nowadays do not work the medicines work but you are knocking the same place on your chin you are knocking it on the table what i'm saying is this if there is always sorrow there's always sadness there's always problem there's always something negative you are thinking about about. even the food you eat will not go to the right place in your stomach you'll be having a runny stomach and it, that's why it says a merry heart a happy heart a joyful heart a merry heart do it good like medicine but a broken spirit dries the bones i pray that from today good news in your family joy in your family happiness in your family and the medicine that comes regularly coming from the joy and the happiness in the family will keep you hopeful and happy all the days of your life in Jesus name we're coming to point number three now point number three forever freshness in the father's family forever freshness in the father's family we're looking at ephesians chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 14 it says for this cause i bow my knees unto the father of our lord jesus christ then in verse 15 it says for of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named and then it says in verse 16 it says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by the spirit in the inner man your inner man will be strengthened and then your outer man will be strengthened in jesus name three things number one born into the father's family number two baptized into the father's fullness number three blessed with the father's foreverness look at number one born into the father's family we're told in john chapter 3 verse 5 it says jesus answered verily verily i say unto thee except a man be born of water and of the spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of god the way we come into the human family is that we are born naturally the way we come into the heavenly family is that we are born supernaturally spiritually it tells us in first peter chapter 1 verse 23 it says in verse 23 being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of God that liveth and abideth forever. Thank God I'm born again. I said, Thank God I'm born again. You are a member of the family of God, and all the benefits of the family will come to you in Jesus' name. Look at number two here. Number two here is baptized into the Father's fullness. In Mark chapter 16, and reading from verse 15, it says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature that's how it came to you that's how it came to me then in verse 16 it says he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved thank god we have been baptized but not just that look at romans now chapter 6 i'm reading from verse 3 romans chapter 6 looking at verse 3 it says know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into jesus christ baptized into 
Jesus Christ. It's one thing to be baptized in water. It's another thing to be baptized and immersed into Jesus Christ. You were baptized into his death. And then he tells us in verse 4, he says in verse 4, Therefore we're buried with him by baptism into death. That's like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also shall walk in newness of life. We're members of the family, we're born again, and now we come into Christ, we're sanctified. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, it tells us there, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, and that henceforth we shall not serve sin. Be it fulfilled in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Look at Acts chapter 1, and I'm reading from verse 4. Acts chapter 1, reading from verse 4, and being assembled together with them. He commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith ye have heard of me. Then in verse 5, it says, For truly a John baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Look at that. We're baptized into the water and water. We're baptized into Christ Jesus and we're baptized into the Holy Ghost. And what happens in our lives then? Look at verse 8. It says in verse 8 but he shall receive power. You have got power. Say I've got power. You shall, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth a greater fulfillment in every one of our lives in Jesus name look at number three number three we are blessed with the father's foreverness blessed with the father's foreverness as it lives forever we're going to live with him forever you are going to live with him forever say i will live with him forever Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 And I'm reading from verse 15 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 We're reading from verse 15 It says For this say we For this we say unto you By the word of the Lord That we which are alive And remain unto the coming of the Lord Shall not prevent them Perceive them in the them Which are asleep Then in verse 16 it says for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first verse 17 it says then we who are they I said who are they we say that now and we which are alive and remain shall be cut off together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we forever ever be with the Lord and so shall I and so shall I ever be with the Lord we're going to be in the family of God forever and ever what does it look like in the family of God up there? No tears, no suffering, no crying, no heartache, no disease, no lack, and there's no evil forever, forever. We're going to be with the Lord. We're born again, now we're saved, we're sanctified, we're now spirit filled, and we're serving the Lord. And we're looking forward to that day when the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise. And then we which are alive, we shall be caught up together with all the saints of God. And I cannot begin to imagine what will happen when you get there and you know no more temptation, no more trouble. No more persecution, no more evil, and all the things of the world, everything has passed away, and you are right in the presence of the Lord. And if there's any tears that you have got, He will take the handkerchief of heaven and He'll wipe all tears away from your eyes. 
forever, 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 I will be there. Where are you? Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord, I will be there. He's preparing that place for you. And he wants you to be there. And you'll be there forever and ever in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord today. We need to open our mouths and begin to worship the Lord. This is the reason why the Lord brought us here this evening. So that he can open up the well of knowledge unto us and we have received it. The marriage and family of heavenward believers. Let's commit our families now into the hands of God. Let's begin to ask the Lord, God, there is a work you need to do in my family. There is something you need to bring into my family. The sweetness, the joy, the love, and all the great qualities you talked about through your servant. Father, you need to bring this into my family. Let's open our mouth. Let's begin to call on the name of God. Are there things as you look at your family? That you know that these things ought not to be so. That you know that I am not really enjoying this family the way I should enjoy it. See Rebecca coming to the life of Isaac. The sweetness, the happiness, the joy. See Isaac in the life of Rebecca. We are going to pray. Whether married for 10 years, married for 20, married for 30. Let's ask the Lord tonight. Lord, revive our families again. Revive our families again. Bring this sweetness into our family. Bring this fellowship into our family. Turn things around. Turn things around. Turn things around. I don't want to endure my family. I want to enjoy my family. And you also want to enjoy your family? You want to have fulfillment in that family? There is a reason for which the Almighty God made you brought you together to that woman remember our father in the lord said there is somebody god cared for you if you are married the lord has joined you together so we are going to pray lord the purpose for which we have come together let that purpose be accomplished let it be accomplished let somebody let let ministers of god open their mouth and pray like ministers let's pray like ministers brothers and sisters Open your mouth, pray like ministers of God. Talk to God. Our family is the foundation. And our family must stand on faith foundation if it's going to be a favored family. Faith foundation. Faith foundation. Tell the Lord, Lord, reestablish the faith in my family again. Reestablish the faith in my family. Abraham manifested faith. The servant manifested faith. Rebecca manifested faith. Isaac himself manifested faith. Lord, every member of my family must manifest faith. Every member of my family, my wife must manifest faith. My children, they must manifest faith. Our husband must manifest faith. Your family will stand on faith foundation. And as a standing on that faith foundation, divine favor. Divine favor. Divine favor. Divine favor. Divine favor. What God has planned for that marriage will definitely come to pass. Fruitful fellowship in a faithful family. Fruitful fellowship in a faithful family. We are going to tell the Lord tonight, from this night, I want to love my wife in a special way. I want to love my husband in a special way. I want an increase in the love relationship between myself and my husband in every family, every minister's home, every believer's home. I want that very special love, special fellowship to come up again in the family. As the husband, all that you need to bring into the family, your part that you need to play, tell the Lord to assist you. Lord, assist me. I want to be a faithful husband. Isaac was a faithful husband. Industrious, 
Isaac continued to attain agreeable posture. He listened to the wife when she was speaking. He advanced towards the affirmed promise that God has made for him. And think about the companionship with that all-time partner. We're going to pray. There will be no friction in our relationship. Husband and wife, ministers of the gospel, our families will be an example. And for you who are we who are wives, respectful without hypocrisy, let's pray. Holy Spirit, I want to do more. I have been doing by your grace, but I want to do more. I want to do more. I want to be exemplary in hygiene and homemaking. I've been doing, I want to do more. Give me the grace to do more, oh God. Building up the home for happiness. Making the home a happy place to be. I want to do more. Whatsoever you have been doing, ask the Almighty God right now, give me grace. Give me grace so that I'll continue to do more. Exhibiting honesty. Exhibiting holiness. Honesty. Holiness. Honesty in the family. Holiness in the family. Guiding the children as the homemaker to follow the ways of the Lord. Holiness in the home. As wives of ministers, tell the Lord, give me that grace, extra grace. And then you are kind, you are hospitable, and you are helpful. You are help meet unto your husband. You are kind, you are hospitable. You know how to treat your in-laws the way you should treat your in-laws and the way you should treat other ministers, friends to your husband. Let's pray for ourselves. There will be revival in our families again. And you will be appreciated by heaven and by the heavenly minded. And then harmless, hospitable, and happy. Let's pray. God, do something in our families. Do something in our families. Bring something wonderful, something new. Something new. There shouldn't be any wife that will be enduring her family here. There shouldn't be any wife, wife of ministers, wife of believers that should be living in secret pain. Living in secret disappointment because of the husband, there shouldn't be at all. Let's ask the Lord through this message, the required attitude, the, nice, the, the, the positive effect will be in our life. There shouldn't be any minister, any husband that should be living in pain and almost regretting, why did I marry my wife? Why did God bring her into my life? I would have gone further than this in ministry without this woman. This is the opportunity we have now to, to bring that family before God. Lord, search my home. Lord, look at my family. Whatsoever is not right, help me, help my wife, help my husband. Together, we will make things right. Together, we will make things right. Lord, help us. Lord, assist us so that we can go for a ministry and glorify your name. Forever freshness in the Father's family. Forever freshness in the Father's family. We are going to tell the Lord, freshness in my family. As it is in the Father's home up there in heaven. Because by and by, we are going to the Father's family. We are born into the Father's family by supernatural birth. We have come into the, fa the Father's family. Lord, help us. We we'll remain, we we'll keep the freshness in that Father's family. We are baptized into the fullness of the Father. The Father's fullness. Lord, my family must have your fullness. My life must have your fullness. I open up myself. I empty myself unto you. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. I open up myself to you. I empty myself. This is my life. This is my heart. Father, baptize me with your fullness. Baptize me with your fullness. And then blessed were the Father's foreverness. Blessed were the Father's foreverness. I am blessed because the Father has blessed me. You are blessed because the Father has blessed you. Now, brothers and sisters, let's commit our children into the hands of God. We are going to specially lift up our children before the Almighty God. That the Holy Spirit will begin to influence our children. As they are growing up and they are coming into uh, picking up a life partner, we are going to cry as parents that, Lord... Help my child, help my son, help my daughter, help these children that they will follow the footsteps, the way of faith that the parents, we, their parents, we have introduced them to. Abraham's household, they believed in God. Abraham's household, they had faith in God. 
and they grew up according to faith that Abraham has introduced unto them to depend on the Almighty God. Please, parents, let's pray for our children right now. Lord, walk on our boys. Lord, walk on our girls. That the flashy things, the worldliness out there, and the carnal life out there, they want to go their way. This is who I want to get married to. No matter, even though he's an unbeliever, leave that person for me. Let's intercede. Fathers and mothers, intercede for your children. Lord, touch my child. Open the eyes of my son. Open the eyes of my daughter. Arrest them. Arrest them. So that they will follow the father. They will serve the father, the heavenly father, that their fathers and mothers are serving. Let's pray for them. They will never make mistake in marriage. They were not our sons will not get married to the daughters of Jezebel. Our sons will not get married to the daughters of Jezebel. And our wives, our daughters, our daughters will not get married to sons of Belial. That God will hold them back. Is there anyone, is there anyone that has taken a wrong step? Spirit of the living God. Let's tell the Lord, recall their steps. Reorder their steps. Bring them back, O oh God. We love our children. We love our sons. We love our daughter. And finally, let's pray for the church, that the church will be strong. That our marriages in the church will be on the solid foundation of Christ. All the marriages contracted, we were not here that after two years, after three years, the couple say they can't live together. The couple say they want to separate. We are going to tell the Lord as ministers in this house, Lord, our marriages in deeper life will be established on this foundation on the Lord Jesus Christ. Marriages will be wonderful. Our sons and daughters, as they are growing up in their marriages, we will see the life of Christ. We will see them raising up godly children as well. That the, the, whole, the, the whole thing will continue. Generations of generations of godly children, godly children coming up generation after generation. And there will be continuity of the church. The name of God will be honored forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name we prayed. Let the ministers of God say, Amen. Amen. Father, we well, thank you tonight. It's a night that has brought so much joy, happiness, freshness, life, faith into our lives and into our families. Father, by faith, we claim every blessing, every promise given to us tonight in Jesus' name. Every prophetic word that has been uttered by your servant upon our families, we claim tonight in Jesus' name. Even though there had been one little misunderstanding, friction in any family represented here, Father, we pray tonight as we leave the church, our hearts will be corrected. Our lives will be set aright. And as we see our Rebekahs, and as our Rebekahs see their Isaac, the freshness of heavenly love will come up again in Jesus' name. The freshness of heavenly fellowship will return in the name of Jesus. Lord, as ministers of the gospel, our families will be exemplary families. That our children will admire our relationship. Our member, the members of the church will desire our marriages. Father, we pray we will not lead anyone astray. But by your grace in every family, there will be faith, there will be dependence on God in Jesus' name. Eternal God will bring our children before you. We pray that you will help these children. They will not go astray. They will not go astray. They will not pick up the wrong wives. They will not pick up the wrong husbands. Deliver our children in the name of Jesus. Marriages contracted in this church will last till eternity will last till eternity. And there will be holiness in every family in the name of Jesus. We are the devil has infiltrated into any home tonight with one voice of serv as servants of God. We command heaven to open the door for the devil. And we command them to get out in the name of Jesus. This church will stand. The generations of generation coming up in this church will be generations of holiness. Will be generations that their marriages will be wonderful. And even the world out there will desire our marriage in Jesus' name. We'll bring our Father before you tonight. More revelation given to him. More strength given to him. 
And I pray that as he looks at us, as he hears from us, he will hear good things about his children. Testimonies in the name of Jesus. As he prepares for all the programs ahead, the host of heaven will be with him. And the fullness of divine revelation pour upon him in the name of Jesus. As we go home tonight, we go home with happiness and joy. Because our families have been refreshed. Our fellowship is renewed. And our love has come alive again. As we see our Rebekahs, and as the Rebekahs see their Isaac, they will give glory to the Almighty God. Thank you, Father, for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name we prayed.